doesn't look like it, but these are troubled waters. Just below the surface, a small, spiny creature is wreaking havoc. These barren areas are quite stri striking in that they they really are barren. There's not a lot growing there. They're kind of devoid of the typical healthy marine life that you'd expect to find. Sea urchins are eating their way through the golden kelp forests here in Victoria's Port Phillip Bay. So I've got a couple of divers in, in the middle here, one in the boat, one in the edge. Researchers from the University of Melbourne are out counting urchins. So we swim out to see how they're going. Has it changed much over the last few months, do you think? Uh, not so much at this site. Yeah. The highest today was 20 per square metre. In a healthy kelp forest, you'll find about four urchins per square metre. They estimate there's about 130 million of these urchins currently in Port Phillip Bay. We understand it, they've affected about 60% of all of the rocky reefs by overgrazing our native seaweeds. The urchins are native, but their numbers have exploded in recent decades for a number of reasons. A big issue was increased nutrients being pumped into the bay in things like wastewater, which provided extra food. When the water in the bay was cleaned up, the excess urchins went in search of something else to eat and started demolishing the kelp. You change the balance in the natural system and then, you know, things get out of balance. In a bid to restore balance, the team, led by the Nature Conservancy, has been growing kelp in a lab and then planting it here. What are you marking out here, Scott? We're going to mark the two ends of our plots. They're about 50 metres by 20 metres in size. We'll mark the two ends of those and we're going to jump in the water and see all the kelp that's growing. They're experimenting with a variety of methods. In some areas, the urchins are regularly removed. In others, they're not and some sites have had grown kelp transplanted. This kelp here was planted a bit under a year ago. In the first two years of the project, the team has planted 400,000 baby kelp, many of them here in this restoration area. And you can already see many of these kelp are taking and growing in this area and replenishing what was once an urchin barren. The couple of months since you've planted that, how much has it grown? Yeah, so when we plant these out, they're about up to five millimetres in size, so they're pretty little. We can just see them with our eyes. Uh, and we see some pretty rapid growth. It's quite a satisfying species to watch. Elsewhere in the bay, some healthy kelp forests remain. So this is the goal. That's right, yeah, so what we're looking at here, it's a healthy kelp forest. It's not just kelp that's thriving, it's other seaweed species and marine life. And lots of fish and crabs and crustaceans and abalone and all these things really rely on those kelp forests um, to be there in order to survive. So it's important for that. They provide a really good benefit in terms of being able to protect our shorelines, they improve our water quality. The Victorian government has just given $300,000 to keep the project going for the next three years but the team says more funding will be needed long term. What we're hoping is now that we've demonstrated these methods and we can show that we can have success with doing this restoration, is we really want some big bold commitments to help us really take this to scale. The lessons learned here are being shared with researchers on the other side of the world and closer to home. Hey Paul. Hey, How you doing mate? Yeah, good Hi. to see you. Climate change and warming waters are decimating other species of kelp including giant kelp here in Tasmania. By him coming down here, we're able to share all of that combined knowledge, experience, um, and, and really synergize uh, the, the, the way that we do our, our projects. And hopefully restore some underwater forests. Natalie Whiting, ABC News, Port Phillip. <laughs>